If you're starting a brand new fish tank, but aren't sure what kind of filter to use, then I'm here to help. Keep watching as I share the three types of aquarium filters that are most commonly encountered by beginners, and which ones are not only easy to use, but also easy on the wallet. Hi, I'm Irene with Girl Talks Fish, here with practical tips on nano fish and planted aquariums. And just so we're clear, all of the filters I talk about today will do the job just fine. My main job here is to talk about which filter is right for your particular needs in terms of not exceeding your budget or not having you waste a lot of time fixing or maintaining this thing. The main criteria we're gonna take a look at today is cost, because more expensive does not necessarily mean better filtration. Ease of use, how easy is it to set up, to maintain and clean this thing? Is it constantly breaking down? Location, is the filter inside or outside of the aquarium, which has its pros and cons. What kinds of filtration does it do? There's actually three methods of filtration, mechanical, biological, and chemical. So mechanical is like a coffee filter. How well does it strain out particles from the water? Biological in this case means, does it have a lot of surface area? So beneficial bacteria can grow on it and uh, absorb, consume a lot of those nitrogen waste compounds that come from your fish's waste. And then chemical filtration is optional, but it's mainly used to take out things like brown tannins or medications for your water. Finally, we want to look at flow. You know, some fish like fast current, some fish like your better fish want really slow current so they don't get whipped around the tank. And then surface agitation. We don't talk about this enough, I feel like in the hobby, but you need agitation at the surface of the water so that the carbon dioxide can leave the water and more oxygen can enter it. So the first filter I want to talk about is an internal filter, and you commonly see this in aquarium kits. And basically, it ha the way it works is it has a grate on the bottom, which is normally not covered by sponge, and I'll get to that in a second why I did that. And then it has a motor on the bottom that sucks in the water, goes through the filter media, so normally you'll have a cartridge over here, and then spits out water like a waterfall, right, like this. And so you can see I removed the cartridge uh, because unfortunately that cartridge does clog up very easily and is disposable. So you have to keep buying new cartridges. And re instead I replaced it with an aquarium sponge like this. So you just stick it in here. Whenever it gets dirty, you take it out, you wring it in some old aquarium water, get all that fish waste out, and then you just put it back in. Reusable, easy peasy. So the pros are it's very, very cheap. This costs like $10. I think if you go twice the size, it costs $20 for a 25 gallon aquarium. It's very easy to install. You just plug it in and that's it. And then very easy to clean like I showed you before. The cons are this thing really takes up a lot of space, but it's mostly rated for smaller aquariums. So this is actually rated for a like six to seven gallon aquarium. So you could imagine how much space that takes up. And then it's inside the aquarium. So, and also near the top. So the only way to hide it is if you've got like put a really big castle or cream plants in front of it. There isn't a lot of room for filter media. Like this is about as much as I could fit in. So you wouldn't be able to put extra stuff like fire rings in it. It's mainly good for some mechanical filtration and a little bit of biological filtration. The grating over here does suck up like little fish and little shrimp. So I had to actually sew thin pieces of sponge to cover the grate and it was pretty difficult, I'll tell you that. Finally, I think the only way you can really adjust surface agitation is by raising it higher out of the water so that the waterfall has a greater distance to fall and creates more ripples on the surface of the water. Another common type of aquarium filter that comes in those kits is the hang on back filter. So as the name suggests, it basically hangs off the wall of your aquarium and then most of it is all on the outside with only the intake tube on the inside of your aquarium. So this motor right here is gonna suck up water from the intake tube, go all the way down to the bottom of this filter basket over here. It's gonna come up through the filter media and then back out as a waterfall pouring back into your aquarium. Some types may include like a bio wheel of some sort that spins, but I've been told that it can gunk up pretty easily, so you might have to clean it to get it unstuck. My current favorite hang on back filter is the Aqua Clear. Um, so I think the 20 gallon version costs about $28, which isn't that different from the internal filter. And the great thing about it is it's so customizable and it can contain all three types of um, 
filtration. So right here we have the sponge at the bottom for mechanical filtration, remember like the coffee filter. We have a layer of biological filtration over here and then um, it usually comes with, I don't have it anymore, but some kind of chemical filtration bag at the top. So you could put in your own like Purigen or whatever it comes with. Uh, but again, because it's customizable, I personally take out the chemical filtration and then I put in a fine filter floss pad there so they could really polish that water. Now, if you've got your hang on back filter from an aquarium kit, most likely it'll come with cartridges, again, that are disposable. So as soon as that thing gets clogged and gunked up, go ahead and throw it away. And then I'll have links in the description below of where you can buy the reusable types of filter media. Some more pros are that it's really easy to use. You just follow the instructions in the manual, go ahead and put in your filter media and then plug it in. Um, another thing is that because it's mostly on the outside of the aquarium, with very little in the inside, it's very easy to hide, it looks good. And plus that means when you want to clean your filter, you don't have to stick your whole arm in the aquarium. You can go ahead and just take off the lid, remove the filter media that you want to clean, swish it around in some old tank water, and then put it back in. As for flow rate, there is an adjustable um, knob over here on the top. And then I feel like the waterfall does provide decent surface agitation to make sure your fish get enough oxygen. The cons are is that hang on back filters usually run on motors, which can be a little bit finicky. For example, you notice this intake tube over here has big wide slots again. So small fish, little shrimp, even big large pieces of debris or sand can get sucked up and then into the motor, potentially burning it out. So I highly recommend if you have a hang on back filter to get a pre-filter sponge. So it's like a cylinder with a little hole here. Go ahead and use it to cover the intake tube like that. And that way nothing will get sucked up and uh, potentially burn out the motor as well as it's great surface area for more beneficial bacteria to live in. Another thing I don't like about the AquaClear is unfortunately it does not restart on its own um, in the event of a power outage. So what will happen is basically if the power turns off, all the water flows out. And then when the power starts on again, the motor will try to run without any water. And as you can see, there's a big fat warning that says, do not run dry, it will burn out. Um, and then also this filter media in here, um, because it's either dry or has very little water in there, it's not getting new water with oxygen. So potentially all of your beneficial bacteria could die if let, left out of water for long enough one of the cons of having a filter that's outside of the tank. Final warning is to make sure to regularly service this filter. If you're like me, most people like to pack that filter basket with lots of filtration media. Um, unfortunately, you can imagine if this starts getting uh, full of fish waste and gunk, it expands, right? And that filter media can expand enough where this top part actually pops loose and then water can potentially start spilling out the back of the uh, filter. So make sure to set in a regular, like monthly at least reminder in your phone or in your calendar to clean that filter media regularly so that you don't have a flooding issue. The final type of filtration I'm going to recommend to beginners is the sponge filter. Super cheap, reliable, commonly used by, you know, fish breeders, fish farms, anybody with a lot of aquariums. And so how it works is you're going to have an air pump, which is gonna sit outside of the aquarium and be plugged into the wall. This is going to attach to um, airline tubing so they come pump air all the way to your sponge filter, which will be inside of the aquarium. Um, air basically gets pumped to the middle of the sponge here, and then the bubbles will rise out this chimney or uplift tube. And as the bubbles rise, it's gonna suck in water through the sponge, thus straining out any particles from the water, so it acts as mechanical filtration. And also the sponge serves as great biological filtration for beneficial bacteria to grow in. The pros are it's very cheap and easy to run, especially on a large scale, which is why those fish breeders and people with fish rooms like to use them. Plus it's very, very reliable. As you can see, there are very, very few mechanical parts that are prone to breaking. So you rarely have to replace this thing. Some cons to the sponge filter are that it can be a little confusing the first time you install it, but it's really easy. I have a whole tutorial over here on how to do it. And then secondly, it does live inside of the aquarium. So you can see my big old sponge filter over here. I had to cover up with a large clump of java fern, but not a big deal. 
However, some more advantages of it being inside of the aquarium is that one, you have much less chance of flooding the area around your aquarium as long as you use this cheap old doodad called a check valve. And then secondly, in case of a power outage, um, your beneficial bacteria have a much better chance of surviving because they're in this giant volume of water that has a lot more oxygen. And then bonus is that when the power does finally come on, it will easily restart, no problems all, at all, unlike the Aquaclear Hang On Back filter. In general, sponge filters have a very gentle flow, obviously can't suck up any baby fish or shrimp. However, if you do wanna adjust that flow, you can go ahead and get an adjustable um, air pump like this one, or use a little air valve like this one. Finally, it provides excellent surface agitation as the bubbles flow up and pop at the top. As for what I personally use, internal filters, I just keep this around for like hospital tanks just because it is so big and ugly but has so little room for filter media. Hang on back filters I still think are such a great beginner filter. However, I personally ran into reliability issues in the problem. I had to replace this motor several times because of power outages, um, sand accidentally getting sucked up, and then it did accidentally flood my kitchen. So you can see that story over here. That leaves sponge filters. Again, super easy, super reliable. It's great for nano fish and baby fish, which is what I mostly keep, and it's not gonna flood my house. If you'd like to learn how to install and clean a sponge filter, go ahead and check out the two videos over here. Take time to enjoy your aquariums, and I'll see you in the next video.